up into the house of God. Um, let's, um, let's just start this morning by inviting the Lord to be here and to ensure that we um, that something is achieved uh, because we we many people meet a lot of times in groups all over the world all the time but meeting with the Lord is very different and and that's really what we want to be doing this morning is meeting with the Lord and to have him change us and mold us and make us encourage us strengthen us and that we could become more like him so let's just um, come at this time of worship to the Lord this morning and the word and everything that would happen here Heavenly Father we're happy once again that we can come into your house and that, that we've dedicated this place set it aside for you and we meet here at a certain time Lord just for our human logistics it all works to meet here at this time Lord but We've put all the, these mechanics in to have everything ready and to, to do it all a certain way, Lord. But the the main thing, Lord, is that you would come in our midst, Lord, and, and bring the dynamics, bring the, the, the life to this whole operation, Lord. If we if we just meet without you, Lord, it's all in vain. Lord, we we know the scripture, Lord, that even if we labor, Lord, if you're not involved in it, then, then we'll, we, we labor in vain, those of us that build, Lord. But we desire that you would come here this morning in our midst, Lord, that you would fill this place, fill our hearts. Lord, may our minds be attentive to you this morning. May our thoughts be upon you. Lord, as we've got this another wonderful opportunity to meet with you and to be with brethren of the same faith, as, as um, the Bible calls it, like precious faith. Lord, and may we look through our, with our spiritual eyes this morning, Lord, and look through the eyes of faith. Lord, and not look at natural things, but look at spiritual things this morning, that you could work in our spiritual life, Lord, to, to en encourage us and to grant us revelation, Lord, and, and just to strengthen and encourage us. We know each one here, we're all going through different journeys upon our walk, and, and we all need different things, Lord, but we've seen that your hand and you work in, in such a way, Lord, that you can achieve a whole lot of different things in one service. And, and, and catered for each person and Lord may our expectation be that Lord that, that that we wouldn't come here and desire what we think we want but we would lay ourselves on your altar Lord and say Lord whatever you want for us this morning that's what that's what we want Lord even though we may not know what it is so I just want to commit the service to your hands bless those that couldn't make it this morning bless brother Andy as he's ministering in um, Stratford this morning Lord may you anoint him and inspire him may the saints there have a good time in you, Lord, may you may you meet with them in a powerful way. Lord, may you forgive us of every sin we've committed, Lord, that we could. And we're so thankful for your the sacrifice of Calvary that was made for us. We're so grateful, Lord, for the the ways that you've that, that you've accommodated for fallen man. Lord, even even a simple thing like sleep, Lord, we can lay down and sleep and wake up and have another day. Lord, I believe you ordained that because you knew that the the way that man is, Lord, we we just our minds aren't very good and we just struggle away, Lord, but you've given us this opportunity to sleep and wake and to serve you again. And the same in our spiritual life, Lord, you've granted us forgiveness and we're so grateful we want to lay hold upon eternal life this morning, Lord, that your spirit could, we could lay aside every weight that easily besets us, Lord, and just, just, um, just dwell in the heavenlies this morning. So we just commit the service to you. We thank you for your grace and mercy towards us. Pray bless the Sunday school and bless each each one here this morning. We just commit ourselves to you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I was thinking about sleep. You know, it's such an awesome thing to to for the human being. Imagine if we didn't sleep. Imagine if we our minds just kept on going and going and going and, and didn't have a chance to stop, <coughs> shut down and wake back up again. It's such an awesome thing that God's God's given us sleep. And and to have a peaceful sleep is so good. I don't know why I'm talking about it, but I just was thinking about it. That it that it has to be of God. You know, that, that He's made the mind that we can sleep and we can wake up and we can carry on. And if we sort of just switch off. You know, there's no sleep in hell. They don't get peace. There's no sleep. But to be able to rest and have peace, that's of God. He's the Prince of Peace. Amen. I didn't get much sleep. I'm not talking about it because I got a lot of sleep. <laughs> Now let's stand and sing this morning. 
Uh, number 125, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. Be thankful for all that he's done for us. Amen. I'll enter his courts with praise. When we stop and think about it, the Lord's done so much for us. Amen. So much. Amen. Sometimes he just builds and builds and we, we just can overlook what he's doing, but he's doing mighty things in our lives and in our midst. Yes. Amen. I will
not why God's wondrous grace to me he hath made known, nor why unworthy Christ the love redeemed me for his own. But I know whom I have believed. Amen. I like that. And am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. That's what this whole walk is about, is trust. I know in whom I have believed. Amen. So all of our trials are to make us trust. Trust in God. Amen. Amen. I know
know what the Flickers choir is that man has uh, put together. How many people? Were you a thousand, two thousand? Imagine all the angels of God singing. <coughs> thousands and thousands and thousands. Wow. Uh, we've got a special from the Sunday school this morning, so we're going to sing um, this next song as they all come up and get ready for the um, item this morning. Who's looking forward to it? Oh, yes. Yes. Good. <laughs> good work, those that put it together and organised it. It's very good. There's a river of life flowing up from me as they, um, the, the old Sunday school people come. There's a river of life. So we're all just doing a special today. Um, we've been practicing it a couple of times, and uh, it would be first time that we all sing it together, actually. Um, or actually, second time, we just sang it in there. And, and it's just because we love the Lord, and we just really want to sing songs for Him. So if you want to feel joining in the chorus, you can. Um, it's a special, so it's whatever we make of it. So And the kids, just enjoy yourselves. Huh? Okay.
Praise the Lord. Guys are actually quite good. <laughs> Brother Donnie's got a testimony this morning, so he can come up after this. Come up now, Brother Donnie. Yeah. Bless you, saints. I trust you were blessed by that singing. Let's give the Sunday school another hand of praise there. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. God has got various gifts that's operating, so <laughs> that's amazing. We don't realize sometimes, you know, they're small, um, but you don't know what is laying in there, it's just the seeds. So, yeah, no, we, we're certainly happy to be here this morning. We're certainly glad to be in the house of the Lord. It's certainly a, a happy place, you know, for a for a saint, for a son of God, for a daughter of God, there's no other place for us. So this morning, I've just been so, so blessed yeah. this week, you know, and um, uh, sometimes, um, you know, uh, I was standing and I thought, ah, you know, I, 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 the Holy Spirit has been sort of just pressing on your heart. And um, and then I said, no, I, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. And last week I was um, testifying to a brother um, and his wife. And I was just telling them that um, uh, over the years I've learned that um, uh, sometimes God uh, has a work for you. It's sometimes very small. And if you don't do what he tells you to do, there's a price you sometimes pay for it, you know. So I was standing there and, I, and the Holy Spirit just kept on tugging at my heart. Give the testimony, give the testimony. Oh, no, no, no. And, you know, so I trust it will just be a blessing to you this morning. Um, Somehow, you know, the Lord has just uh, uh, really blessed us um, while we were in New Zealand time. So it's, 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 it's just wonderful. I just, I just um, before the, the pastor comes up, you know, um, if you can open your Bibles for me in the book of Revelation 18. And it's, it's just so wonderful, you know, just, um, just thinking about how the Lord is by His grace and mercy and where He has brought me from. Just the trophy of His grace, just the trophy of His mercy, you know. And um, just seeing the, the hour that we're at, the lateness of the hour, the solemnness of the hour. And some time back, I actually went onto a site and I read a portion of it one morning here and there was a problem with my computer and I didn't get the full part of it and I just read a portion of it one morning of Brother Brenham in the Ramada Inn and so on and during the time you know just carrying on with life and just you know dedicating yourself and um, uh, I was just wondering I was just thinking you know that um, Jesus speaks of 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 fasting and praying um, uh, and brother Brenham himself speaks of fasting and praying and um, there was a there was a time there was a season that um, in the message of the hour that people felt that since since we are all predestinated it, it is fine you don't 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 spiritualize things if, if the sister had an experience and she's very happy and um, she's telling us, oh, she's just spiritualizing that experience, you know. The brother had an experience, he had something. So something bad happened and then something, somebody learned from it or somebody, somebody comes in they, and they repent. And, um, or somebody has an experience that for us seemingly is negative. And then the person comes and say, oh, no, no, you know, now I'm, 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 you know, through this, I'm drawn closer to God. And we, people sometimes would say, yeah, you're just spiritualizing your experience. You should have stayed with God all the time. And, um, the, the pastor where I served, um, where we served back in South Africa a few years back, um, they lost their daughter, and um, uh, yeah, she was very young, 
And during the week, um, people were just encouraging them. I think it's 10 years since she's, she's, she's passed on. And she was a real blessing. She had a very soft voice, very nice person, very nice, humble character. And it was quite surprised that God would take her at that young and tender age that she had. I mean, I think her youngest boy was just two years old. And it was like a shock for, 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 for people that, how could God take her, you know? And it was like mysterious how just she, she ended up in hospital and um, just through a particular medicine. And um, I think the disease that she contracted or the sickness was Stephen Johnson disease. And um, it's amazing how God works that you, you, you wonder why these things happen in your life, why certain things happen in your life. So you may be sitting there and you're wondering why a thing happened. And then you, you may say that I'm not going to spiritualize this thing. I'm not going to make too much of it. It's just something natural. And, and, and then I was just wondering about why Jesus would say that don't let people know when you're fasting and when you are praying. Jesus himself the Bible says he learned obedience by the things that he suffered. Brother Brenham comes along, born under a pillar of fire, under a slight, having an angel guiding him through his life. And then he would say that I, I, would, I would pray and, and, and fast for, for this one. And people would come to Brother Brenham with problems. And Brother Brenham would go and he would fast for days for that person's marriage to be saved or that person to be healed. And I was wondering, well, I'm in the message of the hour, I'm elected, I'm going to heaven. And, you know, it's amazing that, that if Jesus had to sanctify himself, if, if Jesus had to sanctify and, and, and set aside, Brother Brenham had to do it. And I was wondering, why, 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 you know? And in the week when I saw all the encouragement to the the brother that has lost his wife which was the the pastor's um, son-in-law and also all the encouragement to eat to her brother obviously now our pastor's son um and somehow i was i was reading my new ministry and i was really just enjoying the sermon and and then somehow i ended up where they going where the sermon is actually finished and they singing and they praying let us pray and so so normally when you come to that side brother brandon was finished preaching then because he's praying and there's an altar call or whatever. And I, I had the book and I was rejoicing and I made my notes like normal. And one morning I'm sitting in the train, I think it is in the week. And because sometimes I read quite a lot of different spoken words at the same time. And I went back to this one. And I found this last portion in the last page that's after everything is done. So it goes like this. I just want to read it to you. That you might know that sovereign grace reigns with God. Now he's done everything already. He's done, he's done, the, the service is finished. He's done everything. He's gone through everything. So the song, the praying, now he says, I want to go back. I, I, I just can't help from placing something else in. Did you know those two boys, that woman's children that were saved, God knew that before the foundation of the world. And their names were actually put on the Lamb's book of life before the foundation of the world. The Bible says that. And it only had to work to this minute. So obviously, you know, we talk now, Sister Etty, right, the spoken word. Because, uh, you know, those that read, will read the sermon, my new ministry will know, you'll see what Brother Redham did in there. Did you know God knew now, now he's saying God knew that those two boys would be saved before the foundation of the world. But it only had to work to this minute. Did you know God knew that we would be standing here 10 million years before the world was ever founded? You know, he knew we'd be standing here this morning. The infinity of God knowed every fly, every net every time they would bear their eyes and how much tallow they would produce before the world was ever formed god knew it now you say well if he knows it then why are you preaching so this is brother Benham asking the question that's god it's part of god's program preaching is his program 
when he looked upon the apostles, he looked upon the harvest, he said, The harvest is ripe and the laborers are few. Pray the Lord of harvest that he will send laborers into his harvest. How many remember that? Well, why would they have to pray to the Lord of harvest to send laborers into the harvest if the Lord of harvest was standing there knowing it would be done? Why was it so arranged? Now listen to this. This is what Brother Branham is saying. So I actually quoted this very quote that I'm reading now. Also in the week to somebody else, a, a, a sister. Um, it was in fact the very people that say the message with me, how I came in the message of the hour. They were in the message, they follow the message. Mm -hmm. And it was their parents. Basically, I, 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 met, I met them when I was in, in, I think it's year four or five year in, in New Zealand. But it's, um, back in South Africa, we call it standard, standard three. Or it's our year, it's our grade five in South Africa. And I would go into this brother's house. I'll be, I actually became friends with, with the boy at school. And this is the sister. A little years later on she got married. So I go to their house and I saw for the very first time the pillar of fire in their house. And I quoted this very next quote to her because she's now divorced from her husband. Things happen in life. Things happen that's quite bad in life later on with her life. And now she was saying something and, and I didn't know what to say when I saw how the people were trying to encourage her. And I quoted this. Now listen to this. God has so arranged it that His program cannot move without you and I. And as long as we're not doing what God leads us to do, we are paralyzing His program. But when the church moves by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, then we are in God's will, doing His program. Oh, as soon as I return from California, the Lord willing. So now he's, he's telling them, you know, God needs you and I. His program cannot run without you and I. Amen. And then the next part, Brother Brenham has this urgency. This was preached November 15, 1959. Mm -hmm. So Brother Brenham says, I'm going now to California. And you know what happened in California. I'll read also Revelation 18 just now when he preached that series in California. But he says, as soon as I'm coming back, Look at the urgency on Brother Branham. When I come back, the Lord willing, what the Branham Tabernacle needs is a revival. Mm. Now, it's nine, he's been preaching for so many years. Mm. When I come back, then, amen, they need a revival and the filling of the Holy Ghost. Now, that's the great need of the Tabernacle. Some of the finest people in the world come here. But what they need is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I feel it. I can tell it. As soon as we return back, the Lord willing, we're going to have a revival for that very purpose. That the members of the tabernacle, where people, he says here, were seeking the Holy Ghost, might come in, receive instruction and everything else. Prayer meetings in here to receive the Holy Ghost, that the church might get back into the will of God and move on with the program of God as it moves on. So, so, so Brother Branham did not take it for granted that there's going to be the elected. That, oh, that one will be elected. Brother Branham sincerely would preach and pray and, and preach and talk to people on the streets because he realized he is part of the program of God and God needs his program cannot run without he says here can his program cannot move without you and I Amen. and I said to the sister that God needs you to be a light in darkness we are all in the light. He doesn't need us here. Yeah, we can rejoice. But he actually needs me somewhere in a dark place where there's sinners and whatever. He needs you somewhere where there's darkness. And, 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 and I, I just realized, but by God's grace and mercy, you know, what God has given us, what God has given us, he's given us actually the best. And, and understanding here is a trophy of his grace, as Brother Brenham says in the Hebrew series, speaking of Rosella, she's a product of grace. You know, we are all just a product of God's grace. And this morning, you know, I'm, I'm really happy. Just just pray for me and my family. You know, the daughter is a bit ill this morning. And just while I'm closing with this, 
um, in the in the Revelation series chapter 18 I just want to read this you know just um, we yesterday I had such a lot of plans yesterday and somehow the wife and I we sat down and we started um, this this um, site that I was on where I only found the one part and I managed to get my computer fixed and, and yesterday morning I think it was around about five i went on and i was doing some stuff and the next thing i found the whole the whole of the of the of the of the link actually i could get onto the whole link and it was about um a man called zoe joe brand i don't know if you've ever heard of him joe brand in 1937 he was 17 years old yeah. and he had a dream yeah. and he dreamt about the destruction of los angeles yeah. and he g gave a very detailed account pages and pages full and they put it in, in a book, um, Earthquakes, Earthquakes by Prophecy. And they put it in a book. And in this very book, they actually dedicated one full chapter to Brother Branham as well. And how Brother Branham, it, it, it was just so striking. So we, we sat down at the table yesterday and we just had such a blessing. So all my work was done because when we were done, uh, you know, the anointing came down yesterday morning and we were fellowshipping the wife and I and then sitting and then. It was four in the afternoon. <laughs> My Saturday was gone, but I believe it was just so blessed. Mm. So, you know, we were just talking and my wife said she just had such a blessing this week. She said she was listening to the sermon and the anointing dropped down. And I know my wife, she's not an emotional person. And my wife was sharing a testimony with me. And while she was sharing a testimony even yesterday, my wife started crying. And she said the anointing just dropped down, realizing the lateness of the hour. You know, and um, it's amazing if one sees the lateness of the hour, if one sees where we are at, um, uh, the earthquakes that's happening and the, you know, the things happening currently in Los Angeles. Um, it's, 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 it's amazing that, that um, by God's grace and mercy, we are still here. And I was just reading last night, Jesus said that except he sought in the days, no flesh will be saved. So, so um, it's, it's really just for us as the message believers, my wife was saying, See, see, the anointing dropped down when she, when she echoed to God. She's just so glad that, that she's a part of the message of the hour. Yeah. She said, then the anointing dropped down. Mm -hmm. And I said to her, I don't know if it was the same time, but I was at work and I was just setting myself aside. And, you know, you normally don't say these things, but you just sanctify yourself. You just fast and you pray and you just, you know. And I said to her, I don't know if it was the same time, but I'm sitting in front of my computer and working. And I was listening to the seals while I'm working and had my earphones on. And I looked through the window and an anointing just pressed on me to go and pray. And there's a little sick room that we have. And I went in and I went to go pray. And um, also exactly the same thing. I just went to say to the Lord, thank you for sending me the message. Because Ichabod upon the world destruction upon the world it's waiting the the judgments and the and the fire and the brimstone of god is hanging mm -hmm. and we have family members we have loved ones that we have we have family of ours that we have that that we say lord i can't save them you are the only one that can go and save them so 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 and that is the earnestness and and the sincerity with which i think brother brenham then approached this so I just want to, to read out of this Revelations 18, you know, um, verse 1. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. I'll just drop to 8 verse 8. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day. Death and mourning and famine and sea shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judged her, and the kings of the earth who have committed fornication. He says here, and live it deliciously with her, shall bewail her, and lament for her, when they shall see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that, might, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. Verse 16, 
and saying, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. For in one hour so great riches, he says here, is come to naught. Verse 19. And they cast dust off their heads and cried, weeping and wailing. Those are those that saw the destruction of the city. And they threw the dust on their faces, on their heads, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city wherein were made rich, and all that had subs in the sea by reason of her costliness. For in one hour is sea made desolate. And while Brother Perry Green was sitting privately with Brother Brenham, and that was after Brother Brenham preached, about and there's various places that brother Brennan preached about the destruction of Los Angeles mm -hmm. and um, let me read the next part because it refers to Los Angeles so this great city Babylon it says here verse 8 for will be utterly burned with fire so the next one verse 20 rejoice over her thou heaven and ye holy apostles and prophets for God had avenged you on her and a mighty angel took up, and a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone, and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down, and shall be found no more at all. So while he was reading this, mm. so when he was speaking of Revelations 8, 18, 8 to 10, while he was reading, when he finished, when he came to verse 8, utterly burned with fire and in one hour is a destruction come he says brother Brenham just stopped while he was reading brother Brenham just interjected and brother Brenham says it's atomic power that will fall it's an atomic bomb that will fall on that city and the second part of it verse 20 to 21 refer refers to another Babylon two Babylons the first Babylon which is which is the one that will be destroyed by fire is Rome and Brother Branham says in the second coming of Christ, he says, I see that Russia has got the, 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 the it, it's already ready, the, 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 the missile is there already, and it's got its name written on USA in Rome. And um, when Brother Branham had a visions in 1933, when he related the visions for the very first time, he had the congregation to stand up in the church, and he had the congregation to repeat a number of times what's Russia, what's Russia, the king of the north, what's Russia, what's Russia, the king of the north, and he had a congregation repeating that the whole time, and um, he interjected there, and he said, one hour, that's atomic power, where the, the Vatican city will just be destroyed, the second Babylon is the one where a millstone, and you have read, we have all read it, when Brother Branham came, and he threw up, in the, and Brother Branham had to take up the stone, the angel said to him, pick up a stone, and he threw it in the air and he dropped and that caused a whirlwind and he turned to the brother and he said you see you have to do something yeah. for things to happen mm -hmm. yeah. you have to do something for things to happen mm -hmm. so if 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 you want to have somebody saved you have to do something yeah. if you want to have healing you have to do something yeah. uh, 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 no matter what it is fast pray uh, say lord whatever but you have to do something you have to pick up the stone to get Revelations 20, 1820 to get one is um, a Vatican that will be destroyed the other one is is that city Los Angeles and, 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 and brothers and sisters just my prayer this morning just an encouragement um, you know that it's, it's, a, it's a very late hour it's a very late time for us you know um, uh, I, I'm just so glad that um, you know God has kept me for all these years and um, when I read the account of their dream, and it's, it's quite funny when he, when he said the dream, they went to go do research on it and they to find out if these things can actually happen. And the way he describes the dream, it's the, it's the account in which Brother Branham speaks of it as well. You know, and he gives the dream in very detailed account what will happen. A lady walking with a little child in the road. And in this dream, he's thinking he can touch her to tell her that destruction is coming. He's trying to touch her, but he realizes he's, he's, he's actually, he's, he says he wants to touch her to tell her destruction is coming. He says, and the people were carrying, and he was talking of, in this dream night, he saw the men in the street wearing earrings, and they had beard and stuff like that. And, and, and he said, 
when he, he said when he woke up because it was in a few days that the dream came to him every time more and more he said it will never happen people will never wear earrings 1937 he said in this dream if you read the account it will never happen and he said then he saw how the the woman in the city was dressed immorally dressed and the vision of brother Branham I think it's the third or fourth vision or fifth one of that first year and then it went and then brother Branham says when they went for that vote after they went and they protested the first person they were all modestly dressed long skirts neat and they protested for the human vote and he says the vision showed him when they came back after winning the vote he said their dresses became shorter and so the angel showed him how they went and it went up and then they started becoming immoral after they won that vote so so you know it's it's amazing we can just thank the lord for for sending us a prophet i'm really just so happy um, apologies that I'm taking up such a lot of time, um, you know, I'm really just so happy that, that God has sent us a prophet, um, you know, it's, 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 it's most probably worth more than anything you can have, it's more than money, you can lose your arm, you can lose your eye, you can lose your leg, you can lose whatever you have, you know, um, um, you can lose whatever, and, 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 but this is, is worth much more than gold, that, you know, it's amazing that Brother Brenham, at another place that I was reading, that Brother Branham says, when he went to the Vatican, he says, there's not enough money in the world to buy that city. And God comes with an atomic bomb and destroys it in one hour. That means my house, my car, my gold, my watch, my whatever I have, it's nothing. Brother Branham never attached any value to it. You know, Brother Branham, I told my wife, Billy Paul's testimony, when they came and they asked Brother Billy Paul, what was outstanding? Of brother Brenham, what was outstanding of your dad? He said, Dad was a poor man. He was a poor man. He turned down millions. He prayed for monarchs and kings and they wanted to pay him and he turned it down. And one place, brother Billy Paul said, Dad came to preach and he kept his arm on the hand and he just kept pray, preaching like this because there was a hole in the jacket. He preached always in borrowed clothing, clothing that people gave him. Then I said to my wife, this was the prophet of God, the one that created in heaven and earth. So, so I, then I realized, you know, that he knew because this world, he says, when the angel told him, turn, look, look again. When he looked, he saw America burned up. This great place that everybody wants to be American with the cars and stuff. He said, when he looked again, the angel in the seventh vision, when the angel said to him, look, and he turned. And he saw America's desolate, it's burning. So... You know, the only thing that we have is actually the message of the hour. It's worth more than anything. The, 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 it's worth more than our, our jobs. It's worth more than our houses. It's worth more than anything. So, you know, by God's grace and by God's mercy, um, you know, it's, 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 been, it's really a blessing to be here this morning. And I trust that we will just um, unsonize the word this morning. Our hearts will be, will be so, so in, in, you know, in tune with, with the pastor's preaching that we will lay every, aside every weight. I think the brother said it earlier. Lay aside every weight that so easily besets us. Yeah. Let us not make time. Yesterday I was cleaning the garage. I was just throwing away readers digest and stuff because I used to read. I said, I don't have time now anymore for any other reading. That The hour is too late. So yeah. just pray that God would make me more dedicated to the word. You know, set aside every way that so easily beset us. Um, you know, and yeah, it's been a blessing to, you know, just to realize what God has done for us, seeing the hour, the lateness that we are in. So uh, I'll be taking my seat. I trust that you've been blessed this morning, seeing this, just unctionize the word, just appreciate a little bit. And as Brother Branham said in that quote, it's all part of the program of God. The negative things happening, it's because God needs you and me so that we can do something. So that we can go and pray for that person that's sick. If there's a problem that comes in our house. Before the foundation of the world. 10 million years, Brother Benham says, before the world was formed. He knew about this thing. He knew that those boys would be saved. You know, he knew about your problem. But we have to dedicate ourselves. So I think that's just all that the Lord has laid on my heart this morning. Just to say what is church this morning. That the lateness of the hour will pray for me. As we will continue to pray for you. Amen. Thank you, brother. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, let's just um, sing number 72 in Christ alone. My hope is found as um, Brother Ben comes up this morning. We'll stand and sing this morning.
Amen. Hallelujah. I trust that's your testimony this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, it's good to see everyone out this morning. Amen. Thank you, musicians. Praise the Lord. Amen. What a day to be alive. Hallelujah. Wouldn't trade it for nothing. Amen. Let's just go to, uh, if you've got your Bibles handy. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Trust everyone's happy this morning. Amen. Let's go to Luke chapter 22, and I'd like to read a couple of verses from there, and then, um, and then we're going to go to Job chapter 1. And um, just going to see how this goes today. So Luke chapter 22, verses 31 and 32. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you, that he may um, sift you, he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, but I have prayed for thee, that th thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Now go to Job chapter 1. Notice, notice uh, Satan's desire and then notice God's desire in that scripture. Then we've got a Job chapter 1. I know it's a very familiar portion of scripture to everyone here, but we'll just read verses 6 down to 12. And it says, And there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Thou Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, he that feareth God and escheweth evil? Amen. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth, uh, and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Hast not thou made a hedge about him, and about his house, and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance uh, is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now, and touch all that he hath, and he, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. Amen. Let's just bow his a word of prayer. Father, we want to thank you, Lord, that no power of hell or scheme of man can pluck us out of your hand. Amen. Father, we want to thank you that we are the apple of your eye, Lord, that you delight in us, Lord, that you are, Father, we are the purchase of your blood, Lord, by your grace. And Lord, you are, Lord, we are the ones that you've been looking for. Amen. Father, we might as well say, here we are, Lord, here we are. And Father, we want to thank you for the power of the blood of the redemption, Lord, that's been shed for us. And Lord, how, Father, you're alive and well even today, O oh God. We thank you that, Lord, it's been 2,000 years, but yet you remain the same, O oh God. You do not change. And I want to thank you, Lord, that we can rejoice in our salvation this morning, Lord, that there's nothing held against us, Lord, that we've been washed every wick clean, O oh God. And we want to thank you for this, O oh Lord. And we just pray, Father, we've read a little bit of your word now. And we just ask, O oh God. You are the author. Lord, I probably say it every Sunday, but Lord, we need the author to come. May you come and speak out of your word to us, Lord, and anoint speaker and hearer. Lord, may the children be settled. And Father, just be with those who couldn't be here. I just want to add my prayers for Brother Andy. No doubt he's, he's, he's ministering even now. Lord, just give a real unction of your Holy Ghost. Fill his mouth with your words, Lord. I pray that, Father, if you cause him to go off his notes, may he go off his notes, Lord, to meet every need that's in that place. Lord, bless them abundantly today and bring them safely home to us. Lord, we just want to commit them into your hands, be it those as well who are not here. Father, be their portion. And we just want to tell you that we love you and we thank you, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. 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 You may have your seats. Now, I want, to, uh, I want to entitle this, if I can give it an title, I say, when God says no. And sometimes when you think that, people say, well, God's saying no to you. But I want to say, he, no, he says no to Satan. Now... So when God, when God and, and, and Satan were having that conversation about Job, uh, in a manner of words, God said to Satan, I don't believe you can do it. In other words, I don't believe you. And Brother Bram says this, and then Jesus came and called. He says, and all things are possible to them that believe. That's his word. But impossibilities are made manifest when God has took it as word. Yes, sir. When God's took it as word, the impossibles are made manifest. 
when God says it will be, then you take the word and watch what the impossibilities happen. It certainly will. But notice, even in all that, she said, even now, Lord, whatever you ask God, God will do it. So he's talking about when, when, when Jesus is going to uh, Lazarus's tomb, speaking to Mary and Martha. But she knew, I mean, sorry, she knew that if she could just get the word to come from him, that's all she needed to do is get that word. Yes, it was her darkest hour, and Jesus came along and called. Oh, what a thing. They saw a resurrection. Let's look at some more when dark hours come. There was a man one time, one time named Job, one of the oldest prophets in the Bible. He was a great man. He loved the Lord. He'd done all he knowed how to do, and Satan desired to sift him. And he said to God one day, yeah, God said to him rather, where have you been, Satan? Oh, walking to and fro, uh, up and down on the earth. He said, have you considered my servant Job? There's no him on the earth. He's a perfect man. Oh, he said, you give him everything, do everything for him, and certainly he's a great man. But let me have him one time. I'll change the tune. I'll make him curse you to your face. He said, you can't do it. That's his confidence in a believer. That's his confidence. See, you have confidence in God, but God has to have confidence in you. Why he's infinite, he's eternal, he knows the end from the beginning. He knows Satan couldn't do it, for he is the word. He knowed what Job would do. Now remember Job, he broke him out in boils, killed his children, took everything he had, his health was gone. Even his comforters came and they couldn't do nothing but just accuse him of being a secret sinner. And old Job got into such a place until he got so distressed. You have to get in distress first. You have to get to a time when you're at the end of the road. Job got into the end of the road when he said, Cursed be the day that I was born. May the sun not even shine and the moon not shine uh, by night. May the name never be called. And in that distress, then Jesus came along. He looked down and said, I see a flower die. You know, um, it rises again in spring. If a tree blows down, it comes up again through the scent of water. He's seen all the botany life living again. But he said, a man layeth down, gives up the ghost. Where is he? He knowed he was an old man. He said, his sons shall come to mourn over him, and he perceive it not. Oh, that thou would hide me in the grave. Keep me in the secret place till thy wrath be passed. Appoint me a time and set a time. Uh, and he went along talking like that. So... Satan, Satan was desiring to sift Job. Now, Peter, we understand as, as Jesus was speaking there, he said, he said the, Satan has desired to sift thee. Now, the act of sifting, uh, maybe if we can have those slides, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to jump to and fro just as the Lord leads, but can we put those slides up? And there's a picture because I want to show you. Yeah, yeah put, put, put slide three up. Now, this is, this is what is called sifting sifting wheat where the grain is separated from the chaff and this is part of the sifting process so sifting is to remove things you don't want you just want the pure grain and there's some ways to do it you know there's many ways you know, you either sift it through a machine or these these women here are beating the uh beating the wheat against these drums to loosen up the uh pieces they don't want and then this guy is sifting it through a sieve so he's desired to sift in other words he's desired to remove you from, from, from the congregation of the believers. He's desired to take you away and throw you on the rubbish heap of life. This is what Satan, this is what God is, you know, Satan is telling, you know, Jesus is saying, Satan has desired to sift him. So in other words, you're not going to be in the upper room. You're not going to have the keys. Amen. Jesus has already given him the keys, but now Satan's saying, you're not going to use those keys. I'm not going to allow you to unlock the kingdom of heaven to anyone. This is what Satan was saying, that Satan has desired to sift him, that he could not do what God had ordained him to do. But Jesus said, but I have prayed thee, amen, I have prayed for thee that when, you know, when this happens, that thy faith fail not. Now, we have to, in life, you know, I just want to maybe just go over something from last week. Can we go to the first, first slide? Now this, now, now I want you to remember, Zion, and I'm going to show you in the scripture, I just mentioned it last week, I just felt to just, just repeat this bit, because Zion is the bride, and maybe let's just read that quickly, let's go to the second, second slide, this is in Psalms 132, 13 to 16, I just took one example, for the Lord has chosen Zion, he has desired it for his habitation, this is my rest forever, here will I dwell, for I have desired it, I will abundantly bless her provision, 
I'll satisfy her poor with bread. I'll also clothe her priests with salvation, and her saints shall shout aloud for joy. So Zion is not just a physical location, but God is saying Zion is the bride. Zion is his place of habitation. And we know the human soul is where God dwells. So he's saying that this is where I'm going to dwell. And see, I have desired, he has desired it for his habitation. Remember, Satan has desired to sift thee. Amen. So, so, there's, so there's two, there's only two powers on the earth. There's not three or four or a whole congregation, you know, a whole group of array. There's Satan's kingdom and there's God's kingdom. That's the only two. And one has a desire and the other has a desire. And it's whoever you allow, who you yield to, their desire will be met in your life. Who you yield yourself to. Now let's go up to, let's go up to the first, can we go up now? Notice, notice, this is what God has, this is what God has done for us. Remember, when he's talking about Zion here, because, and, and then we'll come down to the next, I'll show you, he says, Thus saith the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel, and his Holy One, to him whom he hath despised, to him whom the nation abhorreth, to a servant of rulers, kings shall arise, uh, see and arise, princes also shall worship, because of the Lord that is faithful, and the Holy One of Israel, and he shall choose thee. Thus saith the Lord, in an acceptable time have I heard thee, who's... Has he answered your prayers? Except all time, uh, I have heard thee. And in the day of salvation have I helped thee. Think about it. And I will preserve thee and keep thee for a covenant of the people to establish the earth, to, to cause to inherit the desolate heritages, that thou mayest say to the prisoners, Go forth to them that are in darkness, show yourselves. They shall feed in the ways, and their pastures shall be like in all high places. They shall not hunger nor thirst, neither shall the heat nor the sun smite them. For he hath had mercy on them, shall lead them, even by the springs of water shall he guide them. He shall lead them to springs of living water. And I will make a mountain, I will make all my mountains away, and my highway shall be exalted. Behold, these shall come from afar, and lo, these from the north and from the west, and from the uh, land of, of, of Sinem. Uh, sing, O heavens, be joyful, O earth, break forth into singing, O mountains. For the Lord has comforted his people and will have mercy upon his afflicted. He's speaking of you. In this, in this whole chapter, he's speaking of you. But notice, notice Zion's reply. She doesn't say, Zion does not say here, yes, Lord. I have been fed, I have been clothed, I have been comforted, I have been set free. This is not her confession at this time. Her confession is, but Zion said, The Lord hath forsaken me, and my God hath forgotten me. Okay? Can a woman forget her suckling child, that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yea, they may forget, yet will I not forget thee. Behold, I have graven thee upon the palms of my hands. Thy walls are continually before me. So God is saying something, but then the bride, in this, in this particular sense, is saying something very, very completely different. And the reason, the only reason that Zion would say this is because she is not believing what God has done for her. But she has accepted the devil's lie because the devil will say, Thou hast been forsaken. Amen. And thy Lord has forgotten thee. Or is, he only, is it only me that he tells that to? Amen. The Lord, you know, the devil comes along and he says, God doesn't love you. He doesn't care for you. He's not interested in you. This is, what God, this is what the devil comes along and says. And if we're not careful, we'll accept his lie. Because you'll say, look at what's happening in your life. If God really loved you and he cared for you, why did he allow these hardships? Why did he allow this sickness? Why did he allow just these, it seems like you're just in a desert. And you begin to reason it out. And it appears so true. But friends... God's love is not like human love. And we're going to go into that. God's love is not like human love. Amen. Amen. So she's saying that she is forsaken. But now, there comes a time where the bride does not speak this way anymore. Amen. But she begins to confess what he has said. Because we understand in Revelations chapter 12 that there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and, and fought at his angels. And the dragon and his angels didn't prevail. And that, and that battle that was in heaven, they were kicked out of heaven and now they're upon the earth. And that same battle is now 
warring in human beings. But then there comes a point where it said, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. This is not, this verse is not for angels because no blood was shed for angels. Angel, blood was shed for fallen man. Amen. So there's a people upon the earth that overcame the dragon and overcame Satan and all of his, all of his workings by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. What is, what is a testimony? A testimony is speaking things that happen to you. Amen. Amen. And it's also confessing what he has said about you. Amen. Amen. Our testimony is not only God, God has, ha, has delivered me, but you begin to speak the same things that God has spoken. Amen. Amen. That, is, that is what we must do. You want to overcome him. Amen. God has, God has, you know, there's overcoming. We must overcome. You know, we don't just sit there like a bunch of spectators and, and say, yes, the Lord can do all things. He can do all things, but he has to work through human flesh. Amen. His victory must be manifest in his people. Amen. Amen. Over every, you know, over everything. And you see, every generation, there's giants that must be killed. Amen. David killed, David killed Goliath. And then, and then that, you know, Goliath had brothers and there was also sons. There was like four other giants that the next generation killed. You go read in there. The next generation killed these giants. So these giants, and Brother Bram says, the first sermon he preaches after he's commissioned by the angel to take the gift of healing to the world is he preaches about David. And he says, there's a big giant of unbelief in the land. And he says, I've got a slingshot basically. I'm going to go kill that thing. And he killed it. Amen. And revival fires were lit on every hill. People saw that God was real again. But that was in that generation. There's giants that must be killed in this generation. Amen, because we've seen, remember it wasn't, you know, it wasn't Brother Bram the man, it was the office he was in, and God came to that office and revealed himself through that prophet. So we've seen one coming into power, which is Jesus Christ. Amen, we've gathered to him. Go, go read the story. Those, those Gentile warriors, they knew he was coming into power, and that same anointing that was on David fell upon them. And that's why they could do great exploits. Amen. Friends, I trust you see one's coming into power. One's coming. One is stepping. He's not that many steps from coming upon the throne in the millennium. Amen. And if we can see, we know he's coming into power. Draw your sword. Amen. Don't, don't let indifference beat you down. Don't let tiredness beat you down. Don't let, well, you know, just, just busyness of life. Amen. Unbelief, whatever it is. Draw your weapon. Pull your sword. Hallelujah. We're not called just to sit and be all stoic and sit around and you know we believe that you know there should be a bit of you know, a life and an expression doesn't matter if you're very emotional or very quiet there should be a life lived i mean a burning flame is still a burning flame it doesn't matter if it's quietly burning or it's some big some big thing as long as it's burning there and something in your heart says i want to serve god hallelujah i know he's coming into power hallelujah amen friends the zeal of his house should eat us up and it doesn't matter how it's manifested as long as it's in there. So I've come to do thy will, O Lord. Amen. It's written in the contents of a book that I've come to do thy will. Hallelujah. You say, that's being fanatical. I don't think so. People, how much money did people spend to go see the World Cup? Thousands and thousands of dollars. And they didn't blink an eye. They were excited about it. They didn't care what they had. They, I must be at that final. Amen. And they're excited about it. They're enthused about it. And they're still living off the memory. Amen. And we have an eternal thing. Amen. We have the eternal thing. Amen. We've seen the Lamb step forth and take the book. Hallelujah. We've seen, we've seen the Redeemer come. You say, well, how have you seen him come? He's become real to you. Amen. When God came and put his hand upon your life, he's laying hold. This one belongs to me. This one belongs to me. Hallelujah, I've redeemed them for myself. They are mine. Hallelujah. So we should, you know, this is the eternal part. Well, I don't feel all that excited, you know. Just shake it off. Amen. Just sing. Whatever you got to do. Break through. Hallelujah. We shouldn't do it in the flesh. Just, just enjoy Him. Just enjoy Him. You should, I trust when you come or when you open your Bible, listen to a message, you should be a real burn in your soul. I don't want to leave this way the same. When I pray, God, change my mind, change me. I, wanna, I don't want to just talk to the ceiling. Remember, he hears every prayer. Amen. 
So we don't go off on how anointed we may feel. I felt as dead as a post and prayed for things and God's just done it. Amen. Faith goes beyond feelings. But don't just get all you know, the devil. He, he, he loves to say, well, you're tired. You're, and, and then he says, well, because you're, you're tired because it shows you're not interested. Amen. He, uses, he just uses it all again. You know, you're just, you don't really love the Lord because, look, if you really loved him, you would act a certain way. Amen. And he uses your own personality against you. Friends, just tell him to shut up. Remember, Zion, she was actually quoting the devil's word here. The Lord has forsaken me and my Lord has forgotten me. All these verses we read before this, it didn't sound like a forsaken woman, did it? No, she's the apple. You're the apple of his eye. Hallelujah. Now, I want to talk about, if I may, I just wanted to put that in there. But I want to talk about God's elective love. Because we think, see, Zion, she had a confession, the Lord has forsaken me and my Lord has forgotten me. Because our love is different to God's love. It's, it's vastly different. Because we, we think, well, we love our children, so we try to protect them and we feed them and we clothe them and we, you know, we don't want them to be hurt in any way, physically or emotionally. But God's love, you may say this is quite different, but God's love is not like that. God's love is not like that. Now this is from, can we, can, we, can we jump, next one, yeah here, this is from the Church Age book. Now, I just want to read this, so this is from the Smyrna Church Age. Now the Lord Almighty says, I know, there he is walking in the midst of his people, there he is the chief shepherd of the flock, but does he hold back the persecution, does he stem the tribulation, no, he does not, he simply says, I know your tribulation. I am not unmindful of your suffering. What a stumbling block this is to so many people. Amen. Because this is not how human people think. This is not how, you know, this is not what we think. Like Israel, they wonder if God really loves them. How can God be just and loving if he stands by and watches his people suffer? That is what they asked in Malachi 1 verses 1 to 3. The burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, saith the Lord. Yet you say, wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith the Lord? Yet I loved Jacob and I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Now, whenever this, and, and then we're going to go, we're going to go into Romans and read the scripture where, where, where Paul expounds upon it. Whenever people's mind when you read the scripture, before they are even born, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Man automatically thinks that's not fair. Depends what side of the fence you put yourself on. Amen. Amen. I, say, I say that is fair. God is sovereign in his choosing. It's not a democracy. Remember, God, God has orchestrated salvation in such a way it takes any part of, it takes away anything you can do. Amen. Remember, he put something in you to respond to his word in the beginning. And faith is a revelation. It has to be revealed to you. You can't give yourself a revelation. It takes God to come down. Amen. Sure, you should read the word. You've got, to give, you've got to give God something to work with. Absolutely. But it takes God to anchor it from here down into here. It takes God sovereignly to quicken something. Amen. So faith is a revelation. You cannot, and you see that in... Uh, you know, Jesus said to Peter, upon this rock, the revelation of who I am, I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So faith, yeah, because some people, you know, a lot of people, they say if you do this step and do this step and do this step, you have eternal life. Not necessarily. You have to follow. God has a provided way. Enter in at the straight gate, S-T-R-A-I-T. It's a water, a water gate. Enter ye in, be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of sin. So there's a way you must walk. But if it's just a mechanical way, amen, without God quickening it, then that's as far as a lot of people go. Remember, human, human understanding, there's a massive chasm between our understanding and, and divine revelation. They're totally poles apart. 
Amen. Amen. But you have to give something for God to work with. Amen. You say, I'm just going to sit here by myself. You know, there's a cartoon I think I saw on Facebook. Uh, you, know, you know, there's a cartoon guy's praying, Lord, I want to I wanna know your will. And there's a big hand through the cloud saying, here it is. With the Bible in its hand. Here's my will. Amen. Lord, you know, and some people just expect they'll just sit in a room somewhere and a big thunder lightning time will happen. God has sent his word. Amen. Amen. God sent, he sent his final voice to the, to the earth. He sent Malachi 4. Amen. Amen. He sent these things so we can hear those things. And then something in us says, that's true. And it confirms with what we hear. You say, well, I'm just, I just need God to, I need to God to show me. Read it. It's in here. Amen. Amen. So God, you know, but it has to be. Revelation is sovereign. Election is sovereign. Amen. Now, I trust after this service, don't just cabbage down and say, oh, well, I'm predestinated, everything will be fine. You know, to me, when I was, when I was reading into this, I say, like, thank God. Yeah. Amen, that God has chosen me. And the reason I'm loved is because I'm elected. Amen. It's not on self-worth or what I do or how good I think I am. You know, you take, you take Jacob, you take Esau. No one would have picked Jacob. Jacob means supplanter. No one would have put Jacob as, as receiving the birthright. For, for one, he was born seconds. So that cancelled him out completely. You know, he was a little mama's boy. He sat down and he was with her in the tent. And, and Isaac loved Esau more than Jacob. He was a prophet who loved the wrong one more. Yes. Amen, because he was the good church member. He did what his daddy wanted him to do. He went hunting and got him venison and did all these things. He appeared to be the real believer. But deep down, no. No one would have picked Jacob. No one would have picked the woman at the well. Think of Rahab. No one would have picked Rahab for now. A lineage of kings is going to come to Israel and I'm going to use this woman. No one would have picked Ruth. Think of it. No one would have picked these people. But God elected them to that position. And because God, you know, God elected them, therefore he loved them. No one, would have, no one would have picked them. You just think, you go back into that day. No one would have picked these people. No, you would not have picked them. I guarantee if we had a vote, who do you think will marry Solomon? You know, he's, you know, remember he was royalty in the house of, you know, Judah. He's a general in the army. If we had a poll in the church there, just, let's just go back there. Let's have a, you know, a poll. Who thinks that who's going to marry Salmon? You would have picked some royal Israelite woman. You would never have picked a, a prostitute who's a Gentile. You never would have picked it. Amen. No. I, I could be honest. You would never have picked yourself. You never would have picked yourself. You know, no doubt many of us when we were growing up, people would say, I just need to pray for that boy. There's no way he's ever going to amount to anything when it comes to the Lord. But God made you. Amen. He elected you. Because there's something in you that when the word came your way, you said, I want it. I want you, God. Hallelujah. There's something in you that said, that's me. Jacob wanted the birthright above everything. And he was willing to even deny himself. You mean, how did he deny himself? He, put it, he, put, he, he made himself appear like his brother. He denied himself. I'm not Jacob. He denied himself and he received the birthright. Hello, friends. You've got to deny yourself. Hallelujah. But he wanted, he wanted the birthright. And he cheated everyone out of everything. Till finally God gave him a nature change. Amen. That, that, that really resembled the birthright that he had received. Hallelujah. No one would have picked me. Hallelujah. This is why God's election is so beautiful. Hallelujah. As met now. Sorry, where am I? Here. You, could, you see, they could not figure out God's love. See, remember, the devil comes along. The first thing he says is, God doesn't care. He doesn't love you. Mother, just say, I'll just say, and the church said, amen. 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 That's the first thing he does. You see, they could not figure out God's love. They thought that love meant no suffering. That's what, and that people still think that. People think if you really love, then people won't suffer. Hallelujah. They thought that love meant a baby with parental care. 
But God said His love was elected love. His love was elected love. The proof of His love is election. No matter what happened, His love was proven truly by the fact they were chosen unto salvation. Because God has chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. He may commit you to death. Where are we? Oh, you've gone to the second one? Uh, he may commit you to death. As, uh, as he did Paul. He may commit you to suffering as he did Job. That is his prerogative. He is sovereign. But it is all with a purpose. If he did not have a purpose, then he would be the author of frustration and not of peace. His purpose is that after we have suffered a while, we shall be made perfect, be established, strengthened and settled. Amen. Amen. Repeat after me. I'm going to be, I'll be made perfect. I've been established, I've been strengthened, I've been settled. Amen. Hallelujah. As, as Job said, he put strength in us. Job 23, 6. You see, see himself suffered. He learned obedience by the things he suffered. He was actually made perfect by the things that he suffered. Amen. So he's saying God's love. Um, hold on with that one. God's love is so different. How do you know I'm loved? Because I've been called. Amen. How do I know I've been elected because I've been called? And not just called as in a big call, but something in you says, that's me. And so therefore I've been chosen. Just remember this service, whatever you do. Doesn't matter what, what, what storms may come, you know, what battles may, and you may think, why is my life always like this? God has it for a purpose. And if there was no purpose, he'd be the author of frustration and not of peace. You remember this. And so how do you know? Because, you know, the devil says God doesn't really love you because he's trying to put this whole, he knows what human love is. And he's perverted it to the nth degree. But he comes along to you and says, God does not love you. And I can say, I'm sorry, Satan. I've heard this. The bride, I was so moved last night when I thought about the bridegroom call will come right through this, Brother Bram says. The bridegroom call will come right through this. And it is exactly what happened. Amen. That God sent a voice upon the earth. To call an elected, an elected lady. Hallelujah. I trust you can say, I'm so glad I can say I'm one of them. Amen. Amen. That God has called me. I'm not just trying to preach you happy, friends. I'm trying to, trying to anchor it in your soul. If God has called you, you're elected. And if you're elected, you're loved by God. Amen. And you're never out of his care. Amen. Hallelujah. Never out of his care. Amen. Amen. Just think about it. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, now let's go to the next one. This is the lady who's sitting in church age. It says, as many as I love, I rebuke and chase and be zealous therefore and repent. Uh, so Revelation 3.19. This is the same message that John had as he cried out in that religious wilderness of Pharisees, Sadducees and heathen. Repent. There was no other course then. There is no other course now. There is no other way to get back to God then. And there is no other way now. It is repent, change your mind, turn around, repent. For why will ye die? Let us examine the first phrase. As many as I love. In the Greek, the emphasis is upon the personal pronoun I. He does not say, as many would feel he should say, as many as love me. No, sir. We must never try to make Jesus the object of human love in this verse. No, it is the many that are the loved ones of God. Hello. Hallelujah. It is his love in question, not ours. Remember, if he, if we disbelieve, oh, I probably can't even find it, but he says, he says, he remaineth faithful, for he cannot deny himself, the scripture tells us. He cannot deny himself. You say, well, what does that mean, he cannot deny himself? Eve was part of Adam. Amen. Eve came out of Adam, and before the fall, she was called Adam. Amen. She didn't even have a name, because they were, you saw two bodies upon the earth, but, but Adam knew, this is part of me. This is not a different person. This is a part of me. And so Adam could not deny himself. So he couldn't let Eve be burned as she deserved to be burned. But he took the fall upon himself because he, did not, he could not deny part of himself. He couldn't lose a part of himself. He had a lot more ribs, but he had no more feminist part of himself. Amen. He had because of love. Because he didn't want to lose a part. Imagine, imagine being married 60 odd years and you lose your spouse. That's why so many... You know, it doesn't matter if the husband or the wife goes first. Nine times out of ten, the next one goes very quickly. Because there's part of, because they realize there's part of me missing. 
This world can never be the same because I've lost a part of me. And then they go to be where, where, wherever they are. And Adam was not willing. He, he knew he could not lose Eve. And that's why God remaineth faithful. Now, that's just a shadow. What about the reality? Amen. Amen. That's why he remaineth faithful because he cannot deny himself. He cannot deny you. Amen. He cannot deny his bride because she's part of him. Hallelujah. Now, even his purpose, sorry. Uh, it is the many that are the loved ones of God. It is his love in question, not ours. So once again, we find ourselves glorying in his salvation. I say hallelujah. His purpose and his plan, and we are confirmed even more strongly in the truth of the doctrine of the sovereignty of God. Even as it says in Romans 9.13, and we'll go and read it soon. Jacob have I loved. Uh, does, it now, uh, does it now obtain that since he loved me, uh, only the many, is he therefore in the state of complacency, awaiting the love of those who are not drawn nigh unto him? By no means is this so. For he declared it also in Romans 9.13, Esau have I loved, I'm sorry, Esau have I hated. And in verse 11, the Spirit boldly calls out for the children not being born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not, not of works, but of him that calleth. This love is elective love, it is his love for his elect, and his love for them is apart from human merit. That's why I put that in bold. It's, it's apart from human merit. For it says that the purpose of God stands in election, which is exactly the opposite to works or any man or anything that man has in himself. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Because before the children were born, he had already said, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. And he now says to his own, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. To rebuke is to reprove. To reprove is to expose with a view of correction. Chasten does not mean to punish. It means to discipline because the subject's amendment is in mind. Amen. Hallelujah. See, God God knows. Amen. God knows what we must go through. Amen. But remember, the whole underpinning thing, doesn't matter if all gives way. I trust it's just anchored in your soul. I've been elected. I've been called. Amen. Therefore, I am loved. Jesus loves me, this I know, and, and, and we'll say it at the end. For the Bible tells me so. The Bible tells me I'm elected. Before the foundation of the world, I was, I was chosen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, so we see here, friends, it's not just our human merit. And maybe I've probably said this many times, but I trust maybe it just sinks in. Our human merit has nothing to do with salvation. Our, our intelligence, where we're born, what race we are, how good we are, how rich we are, how poor we are, it has nothing to do. How much you think you know of this, it means nothing. You actually have nothing, zero you can bring to the table. You have nothing you can bring to the table. Well, that you say, well, that really leaves me in dire straits. You know, well, no, to me, it puts the responsibility onto Him. Amen. You say, then you go say, Lord, I can't do it. You must save me, God. You must deliver me from this problem. You must set me free. Because he's waiting for you to call out to him. Amen. Hallelujah. I can't overcome this. Of course you can't overcome it. I mean, without the Spirit of God operating in your life, you can never overcome anything. Hallelujah. And that's why God is so good. Amen. Because we can just depend upon him. And that's why now, when Brother Bram says about applying the token to your family, he says, you believed for yourself, apply that same faith to them. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why I say, God, call my children. Amen. Call the young people. Amen. Amen. Call the old people. You know, to me, young people, it's not an age thing. Amen. Some churches put the young people down. I lift them up. I'm proud of our young people. Amen. Amen. They're, they're brothers and sisters like we're brothers and sisters. Amen. God is for you, young people. God is for you, old people. Amen. How do you know I'm called? There's something drawing me from in here. Amen. In spite of what I want, in spite of what I wanted to do, yes. something in here was stronger than my own desire. Yes. Hallelujah! I just surrendered to that pull. Just surrendered to the pull, friends. Yes. Hallelujah! That's all you need to do. God, God is already taking care of everything. Yes. Hallelujah! He says, "Walk." He says, "Walk before me and be thou perfect, 
That's why he gave a perfect sacrifice to make a perfect people that you can be perfect. Hallelujah. That's what he's done. Oh, I can't live the word. Of course you can't live this message. No one can live the message. All that makes is long hair, long dresses, long faces. Amen. But if you surrender to God, he comes and lives the message out of you. Hallelujah. And he lives his word out of you, friends. That's all we need. That's all we need. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, I want to see Jesus in me. Just surrender. Every day say, Lord, hey, we're failures. He knew. Remember that quote you know, from the Lamb's Book of Life, I believe it was. He says, God doesn't operate his business in a haphazard way. God operates his business perfect. So if, he say, if he's called you, who's been called? I must say, yes, God, I've been called. If you've been called, he's not going to lose you the next day. He's not, you cannot frustrate, you can grieve the Holy Ghost, but he's not going to unsave you. No names can be taken off the Lamb's book. No names can be taken. The book of life is a different part of the book. But the Lamb's book of life is God's elected group. And, the, and our names have been put in. How do you know your name? That's why, that's why I put it down to. If there's a deep calling. That goes beyond how happy you feel, how saved you feel, how lost you feel, how whatever you feel about God. If there's something in here that says, I want more of Jesus. That means your name's on the book. That means your name's written in heaven on the Lamb's Book of Life. Hallelujah. You just got to surrender to that. See, the deep calling to the deep. Satan can, remember, don't let Satan try and get you to confess like Zion said. I'm destitute. My God's forsaken me. Because the devil tries, he, he tries it. He tries it all the time. You've had a hard week, you're tired, look at all this, you know, pours it all down on you. Don't confess what he said. I'd say, Satan, they overcame him by they overcame you. I overcame you by the blood of the Lamb and the word of my testimony. I believe what my husband has said about me. Hallelujah. I just confess his word. Confess it till you believe it. Amen. Confess it till you believe it. Friends, we're called to believe all things are possible. I'd rather, I'd rather die in faith and never see the promise fulfilled than say, no, God can't do it. God can do it. We've had such a, we have such a record. Amen. I mean, if you took this all the way down to now, we've had such a record of God living and God calling people and God delivering, yes. God answering prayer. Yeah. Hallelujah. You know, the word of God, I was thinking about this, Brother Armand was sharing with me. You young people who were here, was it last Saturday? He was talking about parables to you, wasn't he? He was talking about parables. Yeah. Yep. Last set, he's talking about parables. He didn't speak to me what he... No, this is not... Okay. He never spoke to me what he spoke to you. And then I stand up here, not on my notes, and begin to talk about parables. What is that? God operating on both ends. Hallelujah. Amen. Just, just... Okay. Who has had God... You, you've been talking to someone. And then Sunday or wherever you listen to a service, and God has just confirmed or spoken... Put your hands up, young people, have a look. Amen. Have a look. And God does it more than once. Amen. Because Elisha knew what the king of Syria was thinking in his bedchamber. Yeah. It was the spirit of God in him that knew those things. And that same God is present here. And I'm not just talking about this building, the bride around the world. Amen. Hallelujah, because the, our God is a dissolver of doubts. Like, he, like Daniel said. It's all part of God operating. Amen. He never said a single thing to me about parables. Hallelujah. But that's God. And why would he do that? Because God is trying to get your attention that he loves you. That God is interested in you. See, Satan says he doesn't care. God doesn't care. He does care. Take the opposite of what the devil tells you. How do you know the devil's speaking? He's try Just see where it leads you. Does it lead you closer to God or away from God? If it's away from God, that's the devil. If it's closer to the... Closer to the Lord, that is God speaking. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, we want to go to, let's go to Romans chapter 9. I want to read this. Let's read this together. Hallelujah. God's love is elective. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm happy, friends. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm glad he chose me. I didn't, Jesus said, you have not chosen me, I've chosen you. 
That's what he said. I've chosen you. Amen. And then remember, Satan has desired to sift you. He's desired to sift you. Amen. But Jesus, remember, Jesus prayed. Jesus prayed for you. Amen. He said, he actually prays. You got to read it in John. He says, he says, Father, that you would not take them from the world, but keep them in this world. Amen. And he prayed that, that you would be as he and the Father are one. Amen. So you and the Father would be. He prayed for you. Amen. Oh, no one's ever prayed for me. Jesus prayed for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Who else would you want to pray for you? Hey, you might as well go to the top. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And he's already done it. Yes. That, remember, that is God's. Remember, what is God's desire for my life? That you would become one with him Amen. as the Father and him are one. That perfect union, that is his desire. And that not you'd be taken from the world, but you'd be kept in this world. That is, remember, Satan has desired to sift you. But Jesus' desire is very different. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 9. And verse 10. We're just going to read what he quoted there in the church age book. Oh, down to verse 18. And not only this. But when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac, for the children being not yet born, neither having any good or evil, I mean, never, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. Hallelujah. And it was said unto her, The elder shall serve the younger. And it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? Shall we say that is not fair, basically? God forbid. For he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it is not him that willeth or him that runneth, but God, but of God that showeth mercy. That's the, that's the important thing. Has God showed mercy to you? Has God shown mercy? That's all that matters. Hallelujah. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, Even for the same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Therefore hath he had mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will, and whom he, will he hardeneth. It's up to God. Amen. You say, well, that's not fair. I say it is fair. Because God... It's not a democracy. It's not a, God is sovereign. He says, I've picked this one and I've chosen this one and I've rejected this one. Not on their merit, but before they were even born, God made the choice. You're just living out God's choice. You're living out God's choice. You say, well, I, I chose him. No, he chose you first. Remember, in order there to be a deep in here, there must be a deep calling. First, there's a deep there before there's a deep in here. So he's showing that God's election, he says, I will have, so to have mercy, is that not love? To have compassion, is that not love? Amen. So God's saying, I will have compassion and mercy on whom I will. Amen. And I can say, I'm just a recipient of that mercy and that compassion. Amen. Hallelujah. So it doesn't matter. You know, God just looks down. And this is not, remember I said it's not on uh, a person's ability or anything they could do. But God just looks down and he says, I'm going to bless them. That's it. That's what God has declared. There's, there's certain people and I'm just going to bless them. And that's it. I've just, I'm just going to bless them. Now, many times we think of blessings as a material thing. But no, that is not that. Do not use that as your measuring stick. Remember, the devil says, look, you're. Your finances are in a ruin and this is all going wrong and he's Jehovah Jireh. Why isn't he providing for you? Oh, he doesn't care. That's why. No, 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 no. Don't go down that road. Remember, Satan, if he, can, if he can get you to think that God doesn't love you, that's normally the biggest thing. Does God love me? Does he care? I'm telling you, absolutely he loves you and he cares. Amen. Amen. Because if we, if we measure... God's, uh, you know, because we want to be pleasing to Him, don't we? We want to please above all things. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. In other words, have your way in me, O God. I want to be, I want to, everything I do, I want to be pleasing unto you. Not to try and earn anything, but because you love Him. So then we think now, 
Because out of our sincerity, if things go wrong, the devil says, well, you don't really please him, and that's why this is happening. Oh, no. But this is, so don't let that become a measuring stick. Don't measure God being pleased with you. So many times, okay, so this is just me. So many times we think of being blessed as in material things. Don't use that as your measuring stick. And don't measure God being pleased with you uh, because everything is going well in life either. God being pleased is irrespective. Remember, he, remember I said, he just, I'm just going to bless this one. I've loved Jacob. I've hated Esau. That's it. Before they ever born. So he just looks at the people and says, I, I'm just going to bless those people. And that's it. Nothing can reverse my blessing. But we see that, you know, if we look, you know, let's just go to Psalms chapter 37. <laughs> because sometimes we can look at, look at the world around us. And we can be envious of what others have. Amen. 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 I'll just, yep. Because, especially being a father and a husband, you want to give the best to your family. Yeah. Amen. You want them to have nice things. You want them to be comfortable. And then you can, if, if, if we're not careful, we can become envious of what others have. But remember, when I said, when God said, I'm just going to bless... I'm not talking about material things. I'm talking about a, re a real blessing. Or wouldn't it be ble Yeah, sure. A blessing can come in a material thing. But I'm talking about a real blessing. Amen. So we go to Psalms 37 and verse 34. He says this here. He says, Wait on the Lord and keep his way, and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a green bay tree. Yet he passed away, and lo, he was not. Yea, I sought him, but he could not be found. But the transgressors, oh sorry, he could not be found. Mark the perfect man, and uphold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. But the transgressors shall be destroyed together, the end of the wicked shall be cut off. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. So David said, I saw the wicked like a big, you know, oh, what a great big house they have and a great career and everything's going so well. But then he saw, yet they passed away, they were nothing. Amen. Amen. So he's saying, don't look at how, don't look at how people prosper. Sure, God is in prosperity too. But don't look at that. I'm talking about a real blessing. God's real. He says he's just going to bless. And that blessing really is in spiritual things. Amen. That blessing is not in material things. It's in spiritual things. Where you can know. You can know where you come from and who you are. To me that's a real blessing. It just adds stability upon your life. You say I know who my father is. I know where I came from. And I know where I'm going. And all, and all this life is is just character building. Hallelujah, but he has an end result in mind, and that's his desire. Amen. To see me come into my maturity, my perfection. Hallelujah. So just walk with God. You know, you just think, you just think of what of what we are, you know, you know, the message we have. This this Bible is not a sealed book anymore. Amen. We know, we know what God is doing. We know what he has done. We know where we are in the word. We're not stumbling around in darkness. We don't have to go and look at conspiracy theories and get caught up in numbers and blood moons and all those things and, you know, look at what people call the Illuminati and all this mumbo-jumbo. You know, we don't have to. We've had a uh, thus saith the Lord on the word. Amen. Amen. So we know where we are. Amen. This whole world is scared. The world is scared. Amen. We're not scared. The world is a troubled place, but we have peace. Amen. The world is a confused place, but we have a clear mind. Amen. Amen. This world is falling, but we're ascending. Amen. We know where we are. Now, to me, that's a blessing. Because a lost person, the, the first thing that they want to know is where they are and how they get out. Amen. And this world is lost. And they have big forums and they had the big climate change thing in France. And they're going to, we're going to do this and we're going to fix this. This is how we're going to have peace. And you know, no doubt with Syria and all these things, there's diplomatic communication going across the globe. And they're trying to fix it. But they don't know how to get out. They don't have a way out. 
They don't have the way out, friends. And God just says, here's the way out. Hallelujah. You know, that word, uh, it says in John 14, I go to prepare a place for you. That word prepare actually means to make a way. Hallelujah. So, we're blessed. Amen. Amen. We're a blessed people. I, I know I don't need to tell you that, but we're a blessed people that we know where we're going and we know where we're from and that God is our Father. You say, well, I never knew my dad growing up. God is your Father. Holy, have a relationship with your real dad. Hallelujah. You know, we see, let's go to Numbers chapter 23. Remember, if God has called you, I don't care how quiet, remember, it's a still small voice. Brother Bram says in one place, that funny feeling you feel come over you, that's God calling you. Amen, that's right. Amen. So it's so simple. Oh, I need a big heavens open all these things. No, just sometimes something on you says, you know you're wrong. Yeah. What is that? That's God calling. Yep. Hallelujah. Oh, the grace of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know in whom I have believed. Yay. Hallelujah. Numbers 23. Now here we have a Numbers 22 to 25 is a story of, of Israel going and, 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 and they want to pass through Moab to go into the promised land. And the king of Moab will not let them pass. And he tries to get the, you know, he tries to, he knows he can't defeat them in battle. So he gets another prophet, Balaam, to try and curse them. That's what he tries to do. And this prophet, remember prophets, the word of the Lord comes to the prophet. It doesn't matter if he's a true vessel or a false vessel. And it says, so I'm only taking one instance. And let's just read this in Numbers 23, 16 to 21. And so he tries to get it to, to curse them three times. Takes them to three different places and all that. And the Lord met Balaam and put a word in his mouth and said, Go unto Balak, which is the king of Moab, and say thus. And when he had come to him, behold, he stood by his burnt offering. And the princes of Moab with him and Balak said unto him, What hath the Lord spoken? Remember, they're, they're believing in the same God. What has the Lord spoken? And he took up his parable and said, Rise up, Balak, and hear, hearken unto me, thou son of, of, of Zippor. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and, it sh and he shall not make it good? Behold, I have received commandment to bless, and he has blessed, and I cannot reverse it. He hath not beheld iniquity in Jacob, neither hath he seen perverseness in Israel. The Lord his God is with them, and the shout of a king is among them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This, is what, this is what God saw. Because what a prophet says is not what he thinks. It's what God is declaring. And so he's actually saying, this is how I see Israel. I have blessed them, and I cannot reverse my blessing. Amen. I have, you know, you know I have blessed them, and I cannot reverse my my blessing, he says, I do not behold iniquity in Jacob. Remember, God sees everything. Here was a people that had, you know, because in one part, uh, uh, Balak says to Moab, I mean, I mean, I mean, says to Balaam, come around this side of Israel and I'll show you its back parts. So I'll show you the worst part of the camp. I'll show you the worst believers among them. Amen. Surely when you see all the, all the, all the badness and, you know, all the, all the sin they do. Surely you'll curse them when you see that because God is a righteous God. I mean, God judges sin. He's not a doting granddad. He's a father that corrects his children and deals with sin. Amen. Amen. So he says, surely, surely because you know the Lord like this because this is how God is. You know, when you see them in this way, then, you'll, then God will be mad because you'll be looking through the eyes of that prophet and he'll curse them. But then God says, no, I, I cannot curse what I've blessed. I cannot curse that which I have elected. I cannot curse that which I have you know, blessed. And I cannot reverse my blessing. If I have blessed, they are blessed. And, I, and not only that, but I see no iniquity in her. I see no, sick, you know, I see no iniquity in Jacob. Now, we are the spiritual Israel. Amen. So when the devil speaks to God about you, remember the accuser of the brethren will be cast down. And he's falling even now. As the bride goes up, he comes down, remember. And so Satan, Satan comes before God and accuses you like he did about Job. You see what they did the other day? You see how they did that? They even premeditated it and they did this. And they did this wrong. And look at them over here. Look at what they've done. 
And God says to him, I see no iniquity in her. Amen. Hallelujah. I see what I have blessed. Amen. Because, he, because Satan would say, you must curse. Remember, Satan has made the world in this way because he knows God must pour judgment upon it. Because if he, if he judged Sodom and Gomorrah for what they did, he must also burn this world with fire. Amen. Amen. So he knows, he knows that if he gets man into a certain state like this, then God must judge it. Amen. So that's why Satan comes to God and says, look at, look at these people that claim to be the bride of Christ. And they claim to follow this message. And they claim to know you in the power of your resurrection and the likeness of your sufferings. And look at these things that they fail. Every day they fail. Amen. Amen. And we do. But then when God looks at you, he says, what I have blessed, Amen. you're blessed. Amen. I could literally say, thus saith the Lord, the bride is blessed. Amen. And I cannot reverse my blessing. Amen. Amen. What I have blessed, that woman I have blessed, she shall be blessed. Amen. And I cannot reverse it. I see no iniquity in her. Amen. Hallelujah. Because they have. Because remember with Moses, they had the smitten rock. They had the manna in the wilderness. They had the brass serpent. Amen. They had the attributes of God among them. Divine healing. Amen. Provision for their journey. You know, their, their, their shoes, you read in Deuteronomy, their shoes didn't get old. Their clothes didn't get old. Forty years, God gave them strength because they walked out of Egypt under the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Hallelujah. They took the communion and gave them strength to walk 40 years. Hallelujah. God equipped them. Moab didn't have those things. They had the same sacrifice, the same approach. They didn't have the same results. Glory. Amen. So God, if you're blessed, you're blessed. Amen. That's it. End of story. It doesn't matter. But remember, God's love is not like parental care. He'll allow you to go all through all kinds of things. And He'll allow you to maybe go through terrible things. But remember, that does not mean God does not love you. Because you've been elected. You've been called. That's it. You say, well, many are called and few are chosen. How do you know you're chosen? Because when you called to Him, Amen. something happened to you. Yes, you can look back in your life and say, once I was this, but now I'm not that anymore. Something has happened. Amen. 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 I'm not just talking about maybe the way you dress has changed. Some, your nature's changed. Yes. The way you look at things is different. Amen. What has happened? That's God's doing. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory. Amen. There's no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able, but will with temptations also make your way of escape, that you may be able to bear it. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He says this now. You say, well, you say, I'm just, I'm just getting by. I've had a desert of a, of a year or a decade or whatever it is. I have this for you. He says in Isaiah 42, Behold my servant, whom I uphold, mine elect, and whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him, and he shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not cry, nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed shall he not break, and the smoking flax shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. He shall not fail, nor be discouraged, till he has set judgment in the earth. And the isles shall wait for his law. So he's saying, a smoking flax, he's not going to quench it. He said, I don't even know if there's a fire burning in my soul anymore. He won't quench that fire. Amen. He shall not, you say, well, I, I don't, he said, I'm so dry. I feel like I'm, I'm you know, Antarctica is the driest place in the world. Whether you believe it or not. You say, I, I feel like that. I'm all frozen over. He won't quench what's in you. Amen. He will not quench it. Hallelujah. And he knows what you're able to bear. You know, it doesn't matter if the whole world falls apart. Walk with God. God has ordained. Remember, he has confidence in you. God has, you say, well, I don't know if I can do this. God has confidence. You know, a coach, you know, I remember being young, playing hockey and all these things. A coach analyzes the players and their performance and, and, and their best position in the team. And they can see things in the player more than even the player can see it in themselves. Because the coaches analyze that player. And so they say, now you go play wing or you go play center half or you know, you know, whatever position. 
the coach places you in that position because he knows you have the qualities to play that position. He's saying, well, I don't really have confidence. I can do it. God has confidence in you. I mean, God has confidence in you. He had, if he had confidence in Job, he sure has confidence in you. Amen. Now, this is, this is in testimony. This is in 1950. This is, this is a prayer line. I just, you know, sometimes, sometimes we love to put up a wall. Sometimes we like to think everything's peachy. Because, because in some ways we shouldn't confess the devil's works. Sure, we should confess the word. But if we, if we lean too far that way, the devil can literally force us into a corner. Amen? And then we become cut off from the rest of the body of Christ because we want to put up a good, a good uh, everything's fine, I'm a believer, praise the Lord, here I am. I'm bride. Friends, it says in James to confess your faults one to another. Yeah. Not your sins, you confess them to God, but confess your faults. Because if we pray for one another, I'm not talking about finding out prayer needs to gossip. That's wrong. But if, there's a, if you have a need, you say, well, I'm battling, sir, and, and you can put confidence in certain people in the church. Say, pray for me. Amen. Amen. They pray, you pray, God comes upon the scene. Yes. There's power in prayer. Yes. If one will chase a thousand, two, ten thousand, how much more? Remember, that's just a shadow. What about the reality? Oh, there's 200,000 demons loosed in this age. There's more. I, someone do the math and see how many we can chase. Amen. Someone do the math. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. He says this here. This is, a, this is a testimony 1915. Forgive me, I didn't put it up. Our Heavenly Father, we thank thee for thy mercy. No, no, it's just in a prayer line. And bless that young man, Lord, and make his life fruitful. Keep them powers away from him, Lord. May he, may he go into outer darkness, speaking about the devil, bound in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Never in all my ministry have I seen that before. Now he's speaking to, I think, someone else. You don't sleep too often, though. For one thing, another thing, you've got cancer. Isn't that right? Now, and believe with all your heart. He says, I have a little girl at home, and I know she's praying the way you are too. So there's a little girl. I'll do everything I can to, um, to ask him. He says, Our Heavenly Father, you see the teardrops coming out of these little pale cheeks rolling down. What can she do, Lord? She's helpless without you. She'll be a wreck after a while. Satan's desired to sift her. But we're praying now. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, be merciful to the little lady. Strengthen her faith. Just now to rule out that demon power. Father, as sure as I'm here and your servant, I believe you'll heal her now. You can't fail. You're the Lord Jesus. Satan, leave the girl. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, come out of her. You know what's happened to you, don't you? You're healed. Possible, lady. And I want you to work for the Lord. You want to do his work. Now, you go, you're going to believe me. If you take my word now and do as I tell you, God will do just what I say. Um, say he will do here. I want you to go from the building when you leave tonight just so happy. I want you to be smiling and go tell everybody the Lord healed me. And if you feel just Satan, say, no, you're not. Say, now, Satan, you might as well go away because a man that could tell me what has been in my life has told me that I will be well. And I'm well now, so you get away from me, see, and be just as happy as you can be. Forget. And when you go out, you watch the difference in your reading. That's, that that's was healed to give it to you, see. And the nervousness is gone from you. You feel quiet, don't you? No more gloomy feeling. And it's going to stay. If you could, if it could make you feel good right here, bring the presence of the Lord to you here. Just believe that what I told you, it'll stay with you now. That's the reason I'm doing that, honey, because you're mixed up and you're just at the time of life of a little girl. Is your mother near the, uh, in the building? I thought so. I could feel her out there. I thought, Mother, you know what I'm speaking about, don't you? It's just her little age right now is what's doing that. Amen. And don't you, you know, fly right or just, just stay right on and be happy and rejoicing 
and everything's going to be all right for you. You believe that? Say amen. God bless you, sister. See, I read that because Satan, remember, Satan was, this is a little girl. Satan was desiring to sift her. But he said, but we're praying now. Amen. The same God, friends, that was there is present. I believe with all my heart. That same God. You know, you say a big trial comes in your life. Satan is desiring to sift you. I mean, to separate you out from walking with God. But Jesus said, but I've prayed. Hallelujah. It's the same thing even today. That's why I was so blessed when I read this. Says, but we're praying now. In other words, if Satan, Satan desired to destroy, he said, you'll be a wreck after a while. She'll be a wreck after a while. So if she kept going down that road, she'll become a wreck. Yeah. Satan wants to wreck our lives, friends. We have an enemy. It's not an imagination. He's a real devil. And there's a real, you know, there's real powers of darkness. But if there's real powers of darkness, hey, we see on the street, we see darkness, man. Don't we? We see darkness manifested. You say, how dark is this world? How terrible? Everything's gone pear-shaped. If that is so on the negative, how much more God is present. Amen. Amen. To strengthen his children in this time of trouble. Amen. Hallelujah. Satan has desired to sift her, but we're praying now. That's why it's so powerful. Don't, don't, don't put on a false impression. Sure, we, sh we should confess what the word says. We say, you, 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 know, you go to a brother or sister, you say, I need prayer. I really need prayer for something. Why? Because Satan is, it doesn't matter how young, how old, Satan desires to sift us. Amen. Just turn us into some commodity for his kingdom. Don't, don't just sit there. Do something about it. Amen. Amen. Do something about it. Because God's, that is not God's desire. I was thinking Satan, he wants to destroy relationships. He wants to destroy families. There's a certain point where God says no. You can't do it. Amen. He comes to, you know, you, you, you see him working. I'm going to destroy that one. I'm going to destroy you. And God says, no, you can't do that, Satan. I want to cause these people to end up in divorce. God says, no. You just think on the day of judgment. It's not just men being judged there. It's angels will be judged as well. And those demon spirits will come up before the Lord. And the Lord will say, you tried to destroy a family of my bride. Hallelujah. What a fearful. And, and they know they've got it coming. They know they've got it coming. But what a fearful thing. Amen. I say, you know, Satan's defeated being. He has no right. You think, well, this is just how life is. It's a new season. We just have to ride it out. Not necessarily. Not necessarily, friends. Don't live below your privilege. Amen. Amen. If there's something, especially between, you know, this world is engineered to divorce the whole world. This is what this world... The whole world is engineered to break up husbands and wives and families. This, this whole society we live in is engineered for that one goal. Destroy everything. Just make everything a wasteland. There comes a point where God says, no. You cannot destroy this family, Satan. You cannot destroy this relationship. You cannot destroy this family relationship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We should live up. We should accept what God has for us. If anything, remember, if anything comes into the family and it's all haphazard, just realize it's not the person doing it, that's the devil doing it. I mean, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against demon powers. Remember that. Hallelujah. Things are going funny. It's not them. The enemy is never your brother or sister or your spouse or your child. The enemy is never them. The enemy is the devil. Even if they are believing Satan's lie, they are not the enemy. So whatever you do, never turn your guns on them. Turn your guns on the devil. Amen. Hallelujah. And pray and seek the Lord's face. You know, if there's a crisis, you see in the book of Acts, Peter was going to get killed. They didn't haphazardly say, well, if he's elected to die, he's elected, he's, whatever, this is his time. He's, he's, he's lived out his portion of the word because he opened the door on the you know, day of Pentecost, all these things. They had a prayer meeting. They had a brother bound. And they were not willing. They were not willing to leave that brother bound. Amen. They were not willing to let that brother die. 
and they prayed and they prayed and God answered the prayer. Amen. Amen. Friends, I call you friends. We have the same faith that they have. And we have a greater portion of faith because the word's been open to us like it wasn't to them. That's why there's times where we should have at this particular need. You say, well, whatever you do, I think I said it, you know, I had during the week, I was walking down the stairs at work and the devil will challenge me on this, but something anchored in my heart. My three girls are the Lord's. Amen. It wasn't a hope so. Amen. Something anchored in my heart, they belong to him. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You pray until, because if God has revealed that to you, nothing will move it. Amen. Amen, because there's always a doubt. You know, the devil loves to come in. Maybe your kids are praying that way because they're not God's. This is, it. this is how the devil works. He says, maybe they're just not elected. You throw that out. You reject that in the name of Jesus Christ, whatever you do. Oh, my spouse or extended family I have a burden for. Maybe they're just not called. You reject that. Do not even give a second on that thought. You say, God, they're part of my inheritance. They must come. Hallelujah. Moses said, will not leave one hoof behind. So you pray, seek God about it. Remember, when you use your faith that you had for yourself, use it for your family. Amen. Whatever you do. Amen. And don't let this world make you callous yes, right. and indifferent. Well, I gave them a chance. Was it God's timing? Was it God's chance? Amen. I heard, I heard a, uh, um, yeah, I heard in a sermon yesterday. There's in a prayer line, I wish I found it. A man comes before Brother Branham. And he had a tract in his hand that he wrote. And, he, and it was called, uh, Is God Real? And he said, I blaspheme God, basically. This man wrote it. He actually totally rejected, totally rejected the Lord. Younger, and he wrote a tract about it, distributed it. He came before the prophet. This is all in the recording. And Brother Barry actually said, you actually love him. But, you know, the devil's twisted you around and all these things. And he prayed for him that he, re he would receive his salvation. I can guarantee if I was standing there, I'll be honest, I think this man has crossed the line. Amen. This man has crossed. But remember, that is God's doing if someone's crossed the line or not. Amen. And that man received what he needed there. Do not turn your back on your family or your friends. You say, they want nothing to do with this Jesus I love. Paul didn't want anything to do with it either. Yes. Amen. Amen. He, had, he wanted nothing to do with it at all. Amen. And look what happened to him. Amen. He said, well, there's no more messengers. There's still bride to be called. Amen. Amen. So we should pray. Amen. We should come together. If there's a great need, Amen. we should have times of prayer. Amen. But what if he doesn't answer? What if he does? Amen. Give him something to work with. Amen. Oh, it's, well, that's just human ambition. No, it's not. If they did it in the book of Acts... They didn't just say, well, that was just predestinated to happen, it's finished. They prayed. David, when, when, remember when he had the first child with Bathsheba and the child was sick, he was on his face praying. Amen. He didn't just say, well, this is just the judgment of God and just he, he was on his face praying. Amen. But then when he found out the child died, he washed himself, he went into the house of God and he gave him praise. Amen. Amen. Friends. We should, that is, that, that is a bright attribute. I know I'm being long, but, but that is the bright on display. Amen. You, mu you must be able to see yourself in those kind of stories. Where they, where they interceded for someone. If there's life in the body, there's hope. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, they're on the other side of the world. That's irrelevant. I think, yeah, I think I've shared it before. A woman comes for Brother Ron Spencer a few years ago. Her husband had left her, was living in another state, shacked up with another woman for I don't know how long. And he just said, she said to him, I want my husband back. They prayed. The next day he was on the phone, can I come back? And they came back together. Not, uh, there's a testimony in the front, I won't put it on the wall, but, but at Brother Tim Pruitt's church, they had, a, they had a Wednesday night meeting. And the Spirit of God was there, they had a prayer line. They're they in church for, you know, you know, until midnight. And during that time, a sister came 
Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, yeah, 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 yeah. Your sister came, and and came in the prayer line and said, "I want my brother saved." Now her brother wasn't even at church; he was at home. And so she, so she got prayer, and then so he he begins to realize, "Hey, it's getting late," and because because he he was living with you know the family, the parents, and then he says, "Hey, it's getting late." And they call someone else up, you know, a friend at church, because he wasn't going, but he had friends in church. They weren't at home. And then he drove around to, you know, some, you know, some other believer's house. They weren't there. He got scared. Maybe the rapture's happened. And then so he just, he, he was just in his night clothes. He drove to the church. And he realized people were still having church. He had, and he just rejoiced. He said, I haven't, I haven't missed my day. And he went to the altar and he gave his heart to Christ right there. Because the sister prayed, I want to see my brother receive salvation. Amen. Hallelujah. And that wasn't that long ago. Maybe a month ago that happened. Hallelujah. God can do anything. That same God they know there, we know. That same God they know, we know. I can stake my salvation on that. Amen. Hallelujah. What are we afraid of, friends? Amen. Should we just stand... I don't think we need some musicians just, but let's just pray together. If you have a need, even if it's just for yourself, you say, I want my joy back, or I want, you know, I have family that's not here. I have family on the other side of the world, they're not interested. But God knows. I want to see the circle unbroken on that day. I'm not trying to do an emotional thing, friends. Just pray. If you want to pray for yourself, whoever. I mean, let's just pray together, shall we? Let's just thank God that we're elected and called. Oh, gracious Heavenly Father. Dear Lord Jesus, we're just so thankful, Lord. I'm so glad that we, Lord, that you love us, Lord. Your love is elective. Father, we're so thankful that it's not our, our doing. It's not our will. Father, it's not him that willeth or runneth, but you that show us mercy. And Father, I want to thank you that you've showed mercy to us, O oh God. Father, we thank you that we belong to you, that we're the apple of your eye. Father, I just want to thank you, O oh God, that the devil's a liar. Lord, the devil's a liar and a bluff. And I, I rebuke him in the name of Jesus Christ. Satan, are you holding these people back? You have no right. I command you to leave them in Jesus Christ's name. Oh, Lord Jesus, we thank you for your great liberty. Father, you see the burden of our hearts, oh Lord. You see the great needs we have, oh God. Father, there's some here who, 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 who want their joy back, Lord. They want their peace back, oh God. They want their, Lord, just that, just, just that satisfying portion back, Lord Jesus. I pray you give it to them, oh God. Father, you see how we have family that's not here. Lord, I'm not talking about in this building, but they're not, they're, they're not here with you. They're not in with you, O oh Lord. Father, on the other side of the world, Lord, you see my, yeah, Lord, my family, O oh God. Lord, you see my wonderful wife's family, Lord Jesus. See friends. Father, people, Lord Jesus, I pray, O oh God, you just get a hold of them. Father, send your angel, O oh, oh God. Send your presence, Lord Jesus. Turn their hearts towards you, O oh God. Break every chain, Lord Jesus. Father, we believe that they're part of you, Lord. They must come. Father, they must come, O oh God. Oh, Lord, I pray you draw them to yourself, Lord Jesus. Oh, loving Savior, may you grant it, O oh God. Father, may, Lord, we don't want to be weary. Lord, we, want to, Lord, we don't want to be indifferent, O oh God. We don't want to be, Lord, just, just, just walking along, Lord. Father, we want to walk with you. Lord, we want to be rugged Christians, Lord. Father, we thank you for every trial. We thank you for the great trials we're in today. Lord, we count it as precious gold, O oh God. We're so thankful for them, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that we're going through the valley of the shadow of death. Many of us, oh God, we don't know the way, but Lord, we know you're the shepherd, oh God. You're guiding us, Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you that we can feel your tender hand upon our shoulder, oh God. We thank you. You never leave us, Lord. Your rod and staff, they comfort us, oh God. Father, you said you'd hide us in your pavilion in the time of trouble, oh God. We thank you that we're hidden in that place, Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you that you love us, oh God, and the devil can't pluck us out of your hand, oh God. Father, we want to praise your great name, Lord Jesus. Oh, Father, may you just have your way among us, O oh God. Amen. Father, we just commit these things into your hands, Lord. Father, I just pray you just meet every need, O oh God. Father, may you grant it, dear Lord Jesus. Father, we love you and thank you in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you love him this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's uh, we have some musicians to come. Amen. God's able. You say, you're just too blind faith, whatever. God's able. If he said it, if he's done it once, he'll do it again. Hallelujah. Just let love project. Hallelujah.
Why does he love me? Because I'm good? No. Because I'm smart? No. Because I earned it? No. Because he, he elected me. Mm. If he's called me, that's it. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. Mm. Amen. Amen. If you want to keep praying, just pray. You pray in your own language. Okay. Do you want to pray? Do you want to bring them for? Amen. Amen. We're just going to pray for Joshua. He's going to hospital tomorrow. Hallelujah. Amen. If the elders of the church would like to come, Brother Kabir, Brother Donnie, you want to come? There's a whole faith bank in this building. Father, all your believers, we're your children, and we believe, oh God, you see how he's going to hospital. Father, we don't know why, but Father, I pray that your healing hand would, would touch him even before he goes in the doors. Lord, may the doctors find nothing wrong. May he have a perfect will of health. Father, by your stripes, Lord, he took, those, he took those stripes that day to make him well. Father, he was on your mind, oh God, when you stood there, Lord Jesus. And Father, we just pray, O oh God, that you have a perfect bill of health, O oh God. We thank you for touching you and healing you, Lord, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's sing. We need to sing, Jesus loves me, this I know. You say, I've heard this all before. You've said this many times. Don't let the devil just say, it's just, it's not empty promises. It's not empty promises. It's not just idle talk to try and make people happy. This is reality, friends. I'm not seeing results. Keep praying. Keep praying. Seek the Lord. Is anything too hard for God? Amen. Amen. Let's just sing this, shall we? Jesus loves me, this I know, because the Bible says I'm elected, so. Hallelujah. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. The little ones to Him belong, they are weak but He is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, oh yes.
that he doesn't love you. Amen. That one thing is sure a lie. Hallelujah. Let's just maybe just bow our heads and close the service. Blessed Lord, we, Lord, I'm so glad we're yours. Father, we're so glad that, Father, you know when our prayers will be answered. We want to be like the woman and the unjust judge, Father. Lord, we're so thankful that Abraham grew stronger every day. Father, as a promise lord it, it, it seemed to linger but there was a season when it happened father we're so thankful we're the sons and daughters of abraham according to the faith the devil tells us it cannot happen but he's a liar the devil says that there's no way that so and so will be saved but he's a liar we thank you lord jesus that thou word is true father we're so thankful that you said whosoever will let him come and father we're so glad the devil's the father of lies we can see where these lies come from Father, because you're not willing that any would perish, but all would come. And Lord, we thank you for that, Father. Dear Lord, as we go our way now, Father, may I just anchor down into our hearts that you love us. Lord, because your love is elective. You've chosen us, you've blessed us, and that's it. Father, I want to thank you for that, oh God. We're so glad we're yours, Lord. Father, may I just bless us as, as we go our ways now. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. 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 Let's sing that, shall we? Start the chorus. I'm amazed that you love me. I'm amazed how you care.
Lord. Amen. Amen. God bless you, friends. Amen. You're dismissed. Hallelujah.
Lord God. Oh, we praise your mighty name, Lord Jesus. You won't destroy them. Hallelujah. You won't let the judgments of God fall upon them, oh God. Hallelujah. Oh, gather them, Lord. We believe for their salvation. Hallelujah. We believe they belong to you, oh God. Hallelujah. We believe that they're part of you, oh God. Hallelujah. We stand in the gap for them, oh God. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. We stand in the gap for them, oh God. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Hallelujah. We praise your mighty name. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Thank you. Won't destroy the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. We thank you for them, oh God. We thank you for them, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, get a hold of them, Lord Jesus. Send your angel, oh God, of your presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, the devil's defeated. Hallelujah. Thank you that they belong to you, oh God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 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 We thank you for them, Lord. Thank you for their salvation. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Oh, God.
Thank you.